said, hey Bauer, this is what you need to use if you're actually going to be exposing this package. So kind of what we're doing now is you commit to your Git repository that could be privately hosted or publicly hosted, and then you want to actually add a Git tag kind of referring to the version of some, some snapshot in the repository's history. In this case, with this initial CSS file that basically sets a border for four pixels solid line, we've stated that this is version 001. And now if we kind of expose this repository, we're going to say this is, this is now my, my internal Bower package called Border Color. You can then go ahead, go back into your is it demo 2. It was demo three, uh, demo three. And install that package as is. So what we've done now is, if you'll notice in demo three, we've actually automatically created Bower components using the Bower install command. And within there, your border color that we exposed, the border color CSS file that you need, and going back kind of like how you would actually figure out what you have installed is just using a Bower list. This will kind of verify that yes, we have 001 installed, and then this hyphen P for paths showing you the exact file you need to source into your project. So if you were using wire dependencies, you wouldn't have to go through these steps. But if you just wanted to quickly spin up something, install a package and include it into something you're using, this is, you know, this is dirt simple. This is really, really fast and easy to do. So going back into our index. So basically all we've done is taken the one file that we did export as a main and then copied it into here. So if we run this, we're still going to see the changes on this border. And if we make the changes, let's say we want to make this hot pink instead and dashed instead of long, solid. You might expect this to change, but it doesn't. So I just did a refresh and nothing happened. And even if you were to do, I think a Bower reinstall of that same thing that you just tried to pull, I don't, I don't believe it'll work. I think it'll just say that you already have this installed. So there's really been no changes that we've detected it's going to just kind of use the same thing you have. If you wanted to actually see this kind of get updated, you would have to actually go into your repo um, after you make the change that's committed. Increment our version number, see, and then go back into here, and I, uh, yeah, I don't know if this will work, but let's try. I think we can just tell it to reinstall a later version. So this is kind of slow, if you think about that, like even though I'm trying to run through this as quick as possible. It still wastes, you know, I don't know, a minute, 30 seconds for you to go in and do these type of things. But if you recall from before, like I added border color 
as a sim-linked package. So what we can do in the demo three is simply kind of reinstall that border color package as, as a sim link. So border link to, power link to our border color package. And now I'm going to see here what we've done is this power components border color directory is now actually a sim link to this local uh, link cache. Now if we refresh here, obviously we'll see the hot pink. But if we make more changes here, maybe we have dotted and it's 8 pixel and it's now orange, we will also see these changes immediately appear. So we can kind of iterate, kind of go back and forth between your changes to kind of a local power package that you're working on and another project that you're actually using, kind of just using that package that you've kind of created. So this is kind of a, kind of a demonstration taken from Uncle Tom. Uh, he kind of goes through a few more things in detail. I think it's actually a pretty cool read. So if you happen to be using Bower and also thinking of trying to share code amongst the different projects that you're working on, you know, feel that, that's a really great link to, to check out and kind of run through. So what we've talked about today, we've gone through the Bower init process. This is <coughs> to generate your Bower.json file, how to use Bower install to install your packages, how to list out the dependencies that you have installed in a current project, how to search for things. I really don't recommend using Bower search. Just go to the website. And then how to use Bower link for kind of local development. Uh, down here, I have a few cheat sheets. Um, they're kind of cool. I don't know. It, it's not the I, API is API is really not that big. So, and especially if you already know NPM very well, um, it's it should be it should be a cinch. So that's my talk. <laughs> the slides up are at Benjamin Ma talk Bauer workflows. So, do you guys have any questions? Yes. Um, what do you think about uh, dependencies versus dependencies? Oh. Only one can be flagged out on the other. Yes, absolutely. So let's say let's say NPM. Um, you have this kind of a big split between what you want to use as your dependencies and what you want to use as your dev dependencies. Typically, what you want is to move all your kind of development related includes maybe your testing framework, um, your static analysis tools, just throw that all into your dev dependencies. When you use Bower, like what's kind of cool is you can have your backend still all in your package.json file, but with your Bower.json, it's primarily for all your front end dependencies. They're all gonna go to production, or most of them will go to production. And in that case, everything's gonna be just a regular dependency. If you go back to, let's say, uh, right here, so cat. Actually, this is not a this is not a great example. This doesn't have any dependencies. It has one dependency. It's using something to push up and to get up. But I guess to answer your question, um, when you have that kind of split, it's pretty much anything you'd want to deploy, throw it up and do it. Anything that you want just in maybe a testing box, throw it into a dev dependency or if it's local for your development. So if you had something like Ember installed as and it had dev dependencies in there, but you saved it as kind of you know, like a production dependency, what, what do you, how do you treat that when there's, well you feel like there's a dev dependency mm -hmm. in something in a package? Hmm. So I mean, what's, what's the damage of just deployment? Yeah, I mean, there isn't any, any damage in it except for the sense that if it's in the package and you feel that it's going to be a dev dependency, then you know, I see. technically it's not separated. I but, see. Um, so I would think that I could just break them up, you know, and just kind of do. Because uh, you can, you know, you can pull in a branch or you can pull in uh, you know, uh, smaller. Uh, so if it is, I mean, if it is truly a dev dependency, you can do an npm install or a bower install with some flag that basically says ignore the dev dependencies and just include the dependencies you need. And then if you're using something like wiredep in your build kind of process, it'll go ahead and intelligently 
put in the dependencies according to uh, the dependency hierarchy, whatever whatever needs to be included before anybody else. Yeah, so as long as you can, if you do like production and it breaks it, then it should be in a dependency. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so if power is a thin wrapper on Git, can you help me? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand. Uh, some good situations in which power link would be preferable over using, say, Git submodules mm -hmm. um, for uh, multi-project. Uh, I guess uh, it's it's unfair to call them dependencies because it's not exactly components is a better term. Right. Right. Um, I, I can so if from what it looked like, it looks like power link is uh, effectively simply so it's instantaneous transfer, but also that means there's no versioning. In unlike, this case, no. Unlike think, with submodules, can can you do versioning inside the link? So for local development, no. Okay. It would just be it would just be a dumb sim link. Mm -hmm. And if you were then to say like this is the version we actually want, uh, typically say if you're actually doing development, maybe at the end of the day you're gonna increment that power version number. In that case, you might want to actually break that sim link. And you know it's it's actually kind of clunky. There's no like unlinking command. You actually just uninstall to kind of remove that symlink from your power components directory and then reinstall using the version you know you actually need and want. Cool. <laughs> I think you can do a power update force. Force, yeah. That would work. Sounds scary, but it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's actually kind of funny. Force flag. <laughs> So yes, you can use force for a lot of things, and it's explained as being very forceful. So, of course. So, so I did an example where you, you updated the uh, CSS file, yeah. and you went back and you couldn't see updates. If you just did Bower yes. update force, then you would have seen those. It would reinstall all the Bower dependencies there in the Bower Yes. Thank you. I believe there's dessert, lots more wine and beer. If we just take a few minutes, then uh, Brad will present on.